Good morning. We're sitting here on the last day of the Jaipur Literature Festival and uh, we've just finished a session with Jovan Mays and Sujata Gidla and we are ha happy to have Sujata Gidla with us. Sujata, of course, uh, has a new book, Ants Among Elephants. Uh, the book is out. It's open to rave reviews uh, where she chronicles the life of her family, of her parents uh, and of her very famous uncle, K.G. Sati Murti, who was one of the uh, m most well-known Naxal leaders in the South. Uh, today we shall be speaking, my name is Rubo and we shall be speaking to Sajata about uh, her life, her family, uh, about her experiences as a Dalit person in India and abroad and of course what plans she has uh, for the future. Sajata, my first question is uh, about something that you just spoke about in the panel. Uh, you've been a part of the radical movement uh, as you write in the book. What are your views both on electoral democracy and on this new crop of uh, Dalit leaders, not just new, people like Mayavati, people like Jignesh Pivani. <clears throat> the first question is... Uh, what? Views, views on electoral democracy. Uh, electoral, def you know, first and foremost, one must realize that a government, a system of government, is not there to oversee that everything is done in a just way. That it's, the government is not... is 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 non-partisan that's a wrong view the government is partisan and it is uh, in the it, it is run in, in the interests of one class as opposed to the other and the indian government is uh, the government of uh, the capitalists and uh, the landlords and therefore any electoral party if it has to work from within this system they will be limited by that framework and therefore there will be no resolution for uh, untouchables under this framework, whether it's BSP or even some other very, very progressive party comes, as long as they have to work within this system, they won't be able to do anything. That's my electorate. And uh, you spoke both about uh, Jignesh Mevani and he, he has this sort of new kind of conversation around caste. Do you think it's going to work or it's just rhetoric? Uh, I must say it's uh, rhetoric. Uh, uh, I mean, he seemed very, uh, he seemed like a very sincere person and the way he organized the UNA protest was very admirable and even now, I, to give him the benefit of the doubt, I think that he sincerely wants to work for the upliftment of Dalits, but the moment he chose to fr work from within the parliamentary uh, framework, uh, I know very well that it, it's not going to work. Yeah. Uh for viewers who are just joining us, we are in conversation with Sujata Gidla, whose new book, Ants Among Elephants, is out to rave reviews. If you have questions or comments, if you want to leave uh, any kind of questions, please do it in the comment section and we shall be happy to answer them. Uh, Sujata, I want to uh, quickly move away uh, for a minute. Uh, and this is something that you write in the book as well. Uh, your views on Gandhi and on this whole question of non-violence. Oh, uh, you know, uh, the the book, the an, an annihilation of caste, doctor and the saint. Uh, it may be very new to Arundhati Roy and her uh, uh, and, and her uh, social circle that Gandhi was actually a bad guy. And to them, it may be like, wow, it's a big revelation. But for us Dalits who are politically conscious, who are socially conscious, we knew all along what Gandhi stood for. And uh, they, my my. My grandfather knew about him and my father knew about it much, much, much before this whole thing happened. And uh, any, any red-blooded untouchable knows what Gandhi's real views are untouchable, untouchability and caste system. And that, and that you think that he was in reality a casteist person? Very much. Uh, it's not like some people, you know, they think of themselves as uh, anti-caste, but there are some kind of practices that they internalize and they, it's too much in their ha habits, uh, then they can uh, slip up. But it's not like with Gandhi. Gandhi was can uh, consciously a casteist uh, Hindu, Hindu guy. And similar are your views on this whole sort of question about whether the Congress or the BJP you seem to suggest that there seems to be very little difference. Yes, very little. I mean, you can see that, you know, under under Congress also, under uh, under VP Singh's also, there have been uh, 
um, attacks on Dalits. Dalits uh, actually, uh, mass murders of Dalits have started uh, in the late 60s when BJP was not in the government. Uh, and uh, communalism is also part of Congress's agenda, and BJP also is. The only difference is that BJP and Modi are open about it, whereas Congress pretended to be secular. Again, uh, for our viewers who are just joining us, we are live at the Jaipur Literature Festival on the fifth day. We are speaking with Sujata Gidla. Uh, if you have questions or comments, we are going to speak about caste, we are going to speak about the Indian experience and about modern India. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section, which will be happy to answer. Sujata, for a moment, I want to uh, uh, talk about your book. Now, this is a book that, at least in India, has been uh, marketed as this kind of Dalit story. Question one. It's not really a Dalit story. It's a question. It's it's a story of modern India. Do you at all feel apprehensive about being bracketed as a quote-unquote Dalit writer? Well, I didn't want it, but uh, I couldn't stop it, and uh, I cannot tell people to to. to to, to, you know, instruct them. This is the way you have to look at the book. This is the these are the kind of points you should like the book for. That is completely not done. I wouldn't want some cinema guy come and say, "Oh, did you like my movie for this, 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 this?" this but you should like it for this. So I can't say that. But the thing is that caste is a central, the central question in 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 India. And I mean, apart from other questions, communalism, women, and tribals, and caste is the central question. So. It, it, I think it follows that you know people will focus on uh, caste in the caste aspect of the book. And the second thing is, it seems that people who did not experience caste uh, are uh, completely unaware of uh, its working. So for them, uh, the things that they learned about caste are, are more revelatory than uh, the other things that they read. So it probably ju they they are justified in thinking that it's uh, about caste, but. It is what it is. And so did the reception of the book in India especially, and, and I know you've said in previous interviews that you wrote it primarily for a Western audience, did the reception of the book in India surprise you at this kind of, oh, there is caste in India? Did it surprise you? Very, very, very much. You know, like how people are getting revelations from my, reading my book, and I'm getting revelations uh, from people who are reading my book. Like, are you serious? Open the newspaper every single day. There are at least five... Uh, atrocities and unt untouchables and five uh, rapes of Dalit women and uh, how could you not see it you know uh, uh, but these people also seem to be like uh, sincerely have not seen it like not avoiding it or something like that so my explanation is that you're living in this whole situation it's the air you breathe so you don't uh, think of air when you're breathing you just breathe so people it's it's like that for for people in India. When you're experiencing it, it caste, you're experiencing it because you're, it's, you're used to it. And when you're perpetrating caste, you're doing it just automatically. You know, it's a two thousand year old system. It's like uh, air and water and whatever it is. So I don't blame them for being surprised. There are other kinds of people who deliberately deny that there is no caste. Yeah, but I've met many people that yeah, you know, sincerely. You know, it's something that we learned and uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Sujata, when we read your book, um, this is the story of your family. Uh, a central part of the book is your uncle, K.J. Satyamurti. But this is also a book deeply about the women. Yeah. It's about uh, your mother. It is about uh, Satyamurti's wife. And, and in ways that, that create complete portraits of them. Did you think at all, uh, uh, consciously, about the ways in which these women are actually the central character of your book? Not at all. I mean, because I was mainly interviewing two people, which is my uncle and my mother, uh, uh, as far as my mother is concerned, I was aware that uh, it's, it's, uh, it is addressing the women question. Uh, but other parts like uh, SM's wife and uh, no, I didn't, uh, I wasn't conscious of that. I was just writing down what I knew. And uh, that's what it is. Yeah. One of the portraits that comes across uh, in your book of the men mm -hmm. is that you don't flinch away from viscerally describing the violence that they inflict on women, both with uh, 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 Satyamurti, with uh, uh, your uh, father, or with the other men. This kind of violence, uh, 
was that something that influenced you when you were writing? Did you think much about it or, or when you were growing up? Uh, you know, first of all, I should correct that SM was not uh, a violent man. He was actually the most pro-woman man ever. Uh, he was very respectful to women. and uh, But then uh, he also saw it as something that happens, you know. Uh, it, it can't be changed right now, like caste cannot be changed right now. So he was imposing on my mother his views on how, what the place of women is in society, but not violently. And when Carrie was, uh, you know, imposing on her violently, he didn't think twice about, uh, you know, condoning it. He did condone it. Uh, but yeah, other men were violent. And uh, uh, I'm, I have been aware of women's condition from the beginning that there are untouchables who are uh, subjected to oppression on the basis of caste. And Dalit women are subjected to oppression both on the basis of their uh, untouchability and as women. So we call it double oppression. Yeah. So uh, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Um, again, for our viewers who are just joining us, we are uh, live at the Jaipur Literature Festival. It is day five, and we're speaking with Sujata Gidla, whose new book, Ants Among Elephants, is out to rave reviews. We're speaking to her about caste, about gender, and about uh, what plans she has, uh, her new books, uh, and what she thinks of uh, the uh, experience that she's uh, received at the festival. If you have questions or comments, uh, keep writing, us, uh, writing to us in the comment section, and she'll be happy to answer. Um, Sujata, uh, in the foreword of the book uh, and, and throughout the book, one of the things that you keep bringing, coming back to is uh, the question of shame. Mm -hmm. uh, you speak of, there are many uh, characters that come and go, uh, for example, Bharati, or who, who was uh, ashamed of the place that she lived in, mm -hmm. many other women who, who did not want to, uh, your mother's friend who's, who thought that she was more friendly with the Kamma yeah. girls and yeah. not with other yeah. people. In your life, how did, 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 how did you overcome this kind of burden of shame? Um, you know, I didn't completely over, I mean, I never came to overcome the shame until after I left India. Uh, I, if, if, if I were in America and moving in uh, Indian circles, I would still have been carrying that burden. It's uh, very fortuitous that I met uh, some Americans, non-Indians, uh, who were very anti-racist. And uh, that's very pleasant surprise for me because while I was living in India, I have never seen anybody who are so passionately anti-caste, you know. Uh, so, and as I said, I identify with, uh, identify caste with racism. So if they are anti-racist, then I can infer that they are anti-casteist as well. And they're not going to blame me for my untouchability and they will be sympathetic to me and they will uh, uh, be angry at the system. So that's, they, they are the ones that help me overcome shame about caste. And uh, in the book you write about the really trying circumstances uh, after your arrest, uh, the kind of burden it put on the family and once you moved abroad. If you can tell us a little bit about how life changed for you both socially, economically and otherwise once you moved away? Uh, actually, right after my arrest and I, I was released, uh, things started changing because pr previous to that, uh, even when I noticed, uh, you know, some shortcomings in the party, I ignored them. But after the arrest, I started noticing them and, you know, saying, yeah, this is, this is wrong. And especially because it, it uh, put so much, so much, uh, uh, you know, uh, burden on my parents, like getting me released and my sister and my brother coping with the fact that I was in jail and being tortured. So for their sake also, I started, you know, th rethinking this whole thing. And after the release, I was actually forbidden to enter Warangal, where I was a student. And uh, so naturally I was, uh, kind of like by by because of forcibly uh, you know kept away from the party I was becoming more normal and it became more uh, uh, more so when I went to IIT Madras uh, and then uh, in and, and once you America. moved to America uh, now Ambedkar uh, continually spoke about how he saw life differently uh, and, and how a life could be without caste oppression how did you see life in America and how did that change for you? 
uh, what did ambedkar notice about how life could be without the caste system when he was at columbia and he writes about it when you moved away to the us uh, how different was the experience what did you see there well you know i didn't experience caste in in america but at the same time not from the people i grew up with that not for not f- within the culture that i grew up in so it's really not complete you know uh, the liberation is not complete because uh, my not being ashamed of untouchable being untouchability is only from the outsiders not from within the indian community and uh, did at all the the indian diaspora in the us where you have now lived and worked for many years have you been in touch with them uh, what has been the experience with the diaspora uh there there were casteists some were some were overtly casteist and some were others uh, covertly casteist uh like uh, for example they will right away ask you what caste you are and uh, they will they will not invite you to their parties and all of those things those are the, the, that is overt casteism and indian immigrant cultural groups the so called cultural groups they are basically caste networks so even though everybody comes from telugu andhra place they have like three different uh, uh, cultural organizations because one for brahmins one for kammas one for reddies so uh, and what else should i say i mean there are people who are more refined about it but when it comes to the what do you call brass tacks uh, they intellectualize not being anti casteist for example rohit vemala died right people who were theoretically talking against caste when it came to defending him and uh, protesting his death they would say oh you know i would have supported him if he didn't die, kill himself cowardly so they always find an excuse not to really when it comes to the 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 thing to defend uh, dalits we're in conversation with sujata gidla whose new book ants among elephants is out uh, she's speaking uh, at the jaipur literature festival on day 5 she has three sessions today we're speaking to her about caste about her experiences in life and of course her book if you have questions or comments please leave them in the comment section and sujata will be happy to answer uh, a few final questions sujata one um in this book one of the things that i found remarkable was that not only do you come really late into the book about 250 pages out but there is one passage where you say uh, and it is sujata i yeah i did uh was that a conscious choice and what did yeah there was uh, you know the story the, the things that happened in the book did not happen in my lifetime they happened in their lifetime and i there is it it's you know it would it would have been inappropriate to insert myself into that but in the end i did come and so suddenly i have to i have to choose whether to say sujata witnessed it or i witnessed it and uh, i chose to do sujata witnessed it and my editor thought that's uh, kind of weird to say that so it's and he wanted me to say just i witnessed it but so we came to a compromise and say sujata that is i witnessed it how has the reaction uh, been once the book has come out both within your family uh, and ex- your extended fam- like your mother and dear like you extended family what have they said about the book oh my mother as i told you uh, the whole story started with me calling her and trying to find out about roots uh, of untouchability as well as christianity so she has been involved from the very beginning and she's uh, she was very excited about it because it's her story first first and foremost and she's also interested in the same things that uh, i'm interested in uh, the uh, the stories of uh, that illustrate caste and women's oppression and things like that uh, she was like always asking me when are you finishing when is it coming out when 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 and then after it came out she was really very very excited um, and my sister and brother they didn't talk very much to me when when i was writing the book but apparently they would they were talking to my mother about it they probably felt awkward uh, they probably felt that you know also apprehensive about how it will come out and how they will be uh, portrayed and how the reaction will be uh, so because of that apprehension they didn't really talk about it uh, in the beginning but now 
at least my sister is very, very, very openly excited and. Uh, and how did the thought of writing? You've written in this book why you called up your mother to sort of interrogate your roots. Did the how did the idea of the book germinate? As I said, you know, what I said in the book is not just for writing and for readers. That is really how it happened. Uh, I, you know, uh, in rural untouchables, they will tell their children, this is how we are, we are born. But when Dalits move away from that traditional setting and they're like within this other system where they go to schools and have jobs, they have to think like, why? Why, why are we untouchable? You know, if you're in rural India, they will know that this is our fate. This is what God did to us. But anybody who's a little bit rational would question why are we untouchables? And that is how it began. Now that you're back in India, uh, you, have, you must have seen the ways in which caste operates uh, in, in India, you have you made many trips back home when and you spoke over the phone to your uh, family. Cast in modern in the modern day, uh, and we've spoken about this before. How uh, how do how how has this shifted? How has it? Uh, how do how do you see caste today operating? Uh, you know, I think that there were periods in Indian history, especially uh, immediately after independence. Uh, Dalits were not facing so much violence and so much open discrimination. I think there's a reason for it because when you're fighting against a colonizer, you, you need to present a united front. You can't say, oh, I'm fighting, but they are Dalits. You can't say that, right? So in order to present a united front, uh, the political parties, especially Congress and Gandhi, kind of promoted, you know, including untouchables. But it's for an ulterior motive, but people who listen to Gandhi might sincerely believe what he was saying, even though he was lying. And so uh, there was time in, immediately after independence when Dalits were not so much discriminated. But ever since then, starting in the uh, late 60s, untouchability has increased very much, not only in, in the literal sense of not touching, but violence because untouchables don't want to stay in the place that was uh, accorded them by the Hinduism. And do you also, and this you spoke about in the panel, think that caste has shifted form and is now present in various different kinds of ways? How do you see um, you can see it like uh, Rohit Vemula, for example, and uh, uh, the, the, the number of Dalit judges, the number of Dalit professors, Dalit, the number of uh, uh, media persons in uh, Dalit persons in uh, media. All of this is uh, this is uh, you know is obvious to any of us. Right? Yeah. Uh, a really obvious question about your future plans, your books, what are you planning on writing? Yeah, uh, you know, I actually thought, started this uh, writing as a three book project. One is uh, uh, from the beginning as far as back as we know about our, our, our roots until um, my, uh, my uncle's generation, that should be one part. And uh, uh, my uncles and my, my mom's uh, generation, their life should be the third, uh, second book and my life from them is going to be the third book. So I already have the prequel which starts from how as tribals we lived in the jungle and how we came out and how we, how we were integrated into Hindu society as untouchables. That book is already there. So I just have to, uh, you know, finalize it. And uh, so I would call it prequel to Ants Among Elephants. And there will be a sequel, but there, there has been no work done yet um, towards that portion of the A final question, Sajata, uh, is, is, is a question on uh, Hinduism. Now, this is a, a festival where uh, one has seen uh, Shashi Tharoor's book, Why I'm a Hindu, release. Uh, there's, there's this whole conversation about how the right, quote-unquote right-wing brand of Hindutva is different from the more tolerant, more open Hinduism. In your mind, is there a difference? And you know, I can't answer this because um, oh, I can say one thing for sure. Hinduism is actually a tailor-made tailor -made religion for, for caste system. And how else would you justify Brahmins came from the forehead of Brahma and uh, Kshatriyas from the shoulders. And so if Brahma, Brahma is doing this, then 
how can you deny that caste system is not in Hinduism? It is very much in Hinduism. Hinduism is a religion prop to, to support, uh, to give ideological and religious uh, uh, support to caste system. So in that sense, yes, Hinduism is caste system. But is it possible to have progressive Hinduism? I can't tell because you remove this whole caste thing. So what will remain? Like, what? I mean... And so is, is it possible for Dalits to be empowered within the Hindu framework? No. No. That's not yet. I mean, you're celebrating the killing of Ravana, the killing of these people. and the, I mean, they're all conflicts. And how could you say that uh, you can celebrate festivals without uh, having any reference to caste? Right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Sujata, so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, and thank you to our viewers at Inside Times for joining us in this conversation with Sujata Gidla, uh, whose new book, Ants Among Elephants, is uh, out. Um, thank you and good morning and keep watching Inside Times for more Facebook Lives.